What's going on guys? Uh, so a few weeks ago I let you in on a quick uh, sneak peek of a video series I'm working on. I'll be making a full video series on the science and the art of fireworking. Uh, I won't go into too much detail here, but a firework shell is made up of essentially two hemispheres containing the burst charge and the effects. These two hemispheres need to be bonded together to form a single solid sphere. The sphere needs to be solid in order for the pressure inside the sphere to build up, resulting in a stronger, more powerful break. In theory, if we could use the perfect glue to bind the hemis together at a molecular level, that would be the perfect solution. However, the perfect glue doesn't exist, and the shell will always break along the seam and result in a really weak break. You can get plastic hemispheres and weld them together with a special adhesive, but that's another story. The traditional method to accomplish this is to use two cardboard or plastic hemispheres. Here I'm using hemispheres I 3D printed in a biodegradable plastic. They are then filled up with comp, pressed together, and then wrapped up with a layer of essentially paper mache or gummed tape. Gummed tape is basically craft paper coated with an adhesive that is activated with water. This works great and has been the method used for centuries. However, pasting shells this way takes ages. Also, it takes a lot of skill and practice to get a perfectly uniform thickness all around. Skill and practice which I definitely don't have. Modern shells are usually machine pasted. These machines are capable of pasting shells in the blink of an eye and are easily capable of wrapping the shell with an even thickness. However, these machines are not cheap and are super loud and bulky. So I basically took it upon myself to try and make a simplified and compact version. After getting some inspiration from other machines online, and after two days of intense solid working, here's what I came up with. Now, just before we carry on with the video, I would just like to remind everyone that this is not a tutorial and that you should never be attempting to recreate anything you see here unless you are a licensed professional like myself, or if you have a lot of experience. But let's face it, you know, explosions and explosives and just blowing shit up in general is a lot of fun, right? We all love to blow shit up. Well, it turns out that there is a way you can do this safely and for free. Allow me to introduce you to World of Warships, the sponsor of today's video. Ah, uh, ah, uh, see what I did there? World of Warships is a free interactive PC game in which you get to basically blow shit up all day long. Uh, you can pick between over 300 historically accurate ships and even customize them to your liking. Some of the landscapes are absolutely gorgeous, but if they are not gorgeous enough for you, you can go ahead and customize them to your liking as well. Uh, depending on your playstyle, you can pick between four types of ships. Destroyers, battleships, cruisers, and air carriers. Either way, you get to blow shit up. So, uh, to play, check out the link in the video description. Uh, if you use the code BOOM, you get access to a huge starter pack. It contains 200 doubloons, two ships, St. Louis, and a premium ship called Emden, 20 restless fire camouflage, 2.5 million credits, and seven days of premium. And let's get back to the video. This machine can be broken down into three parts. You have the chassis, the pasting assembly, and the shell spinner. Uh, the pasting assembly rotates around this pivot and is powered by this 12 volt wiper motor. The assembly itself can be broken down into four different components. This is the tape spool mounted on a pivot to allow it to unwind without any friction. This is the tape dampener. Uh, it's simply a box filled with wet sponge to, again, activate the adhesive on the tape. This here is simply a pulley mounted on a slider. This allows me to get the pulley as close as possible to the shell and to adjust for different shell sizes. And finally, here we have uh, literally a piece of plastic that's used to flatten the tape once it has been applied to get rid of any folds and wrinkles. And for this machine to work, the pasting assembly needs to spin around the shell, but the shell itself also needs to rotate around its poles. However, its RPM needs to be a lot less than the RPM of the pasting assembly. And because I didn't have a motor capable of spinning at such a low RPM, I decided to use a stepper motor, which I ended up regretting later on, but we'll get back to that in just a second. The top clamp can slide up and down this rod, but is locked radially. Uh, this allows me to clamp the shell down using this nut and still be able to transmit the torque from the motor to the shell. And that's just about it, so let's get to it!
Okie dokie, so it was time for a quick test to make sure the pasting assembly is capable of spinning properly. And it turns out, it could not. Uh, the belt wasn't taut enough, which caused it to skip teeth during startup. So I added a tensioning pulley, which I should have added anyway in the first place, and this seemed to have fixed the problem. I also decided to add a fat 1 ohm resistor in series with the motor to try and limit the current draw. Now keep in mind that this is definitely a very sketchy and inefficient way of uh, slowing down a motor, but it's good enough for now. Another issue I had was that the top and bottom clamp were very misaligned. Uh, this is due to me being very imprecise while I was welding. So, to make sure I had precisely the desired angle, I replaced the angled piece of steel with a 3D printed block. The stepper motor is driven by this A4988 hooked up to a Nano. I decided to use a shield simply so that I didn't have to bother with the wiring. Here is the code that allows me to simply enter an RPM value. The motor will then spin at that RPM as soon as the Nano is powered on, just like a regular motor and gearbox would. Okay, so it was finally time for the first pasting test, and as I was mounting the roll of tape, I already knew it was going to be a disaster. And it turns out my intuition was correct. Um, it was definitely not working the way I had hoped. The first modification was to simply add a piece of cardboard underneath the roll of tape. This prevents the strands from unwinding and getting tangled inside the machine. And this time I also bent the flattening bar in the right direction. As you can see, this is a major improvement and the machine is actually capable of running. However, the results were less than impressive. Um, the shell I obtained looked more like a rotten onion than anything else. I figured this was due to two things. Uh, first, the tape I was using was way too wide considering the diameter of the shell. This tape might have been useful for a larger shell, say 12 inch or more, but for threes and fours, the tape simply can't be tightly pressed against the hemis. Now, what kind of sucks is that a few days before testing, I got a little bit too confident and I ordered 20 of these rolls. And because I didn't really feel like throwing them away, I decided to cut them in half using the mitre saw. And the second modification was to add a tensioning system to the tape, as this would really force the tape to stick and stay flat against the hemis. And I found that the easiest way to do that was to redesign the dampening box. And here's how it works. This screw allows me to push this piston forwards, compressing the sponge. The tape gets jammed between the box and the sponge. The sponge still dampens the tape, but the more I tighten the screw, the more the tape gets compressed and the harder it gets to pull on it. And I also added a piece of foam on the flattening bar for good measure. So, after inserting the tape through the pasting assembly and sticking one into the shell, I was finally starting to get some really nice results. The tape seemed to be evenly spaced out and the surface was nice and smooth. Now, although the tests seemed to work great for 3 and 4 inch shells, uh, when I tried pasting a 6 inch shell, this stepper motor didn't have enough torque to resist the counter torque of the pasting assembly, so I gave it a little extra juice and achieved pretty much the same results as before. So, I'm definitely calling this project a success. Uh, there's definitely a few things I would probably modify in the future if I can ever be bothered. Uh, like we saw, the stepper motor is not really ideal and made things quite a bit more complicated. A regular old uh, DC motor and gearbox would have been a much better choice. Also, as I'm sure most of you have noticed, unlike the traditional pasting method, with this machine the shell is left with two huge uh, holes at its poles. This is definitely not ideal, but if the shell hemispheres are nice and solid, it should still create a fairly symmetrical break. Also, since the shell spinning assembly is fixed at a locked pitch, there will be more tape buildup on the poles than the equator. To fix this, it would be best to build up more tape on the equator first to compensate, then slightly rotate the shell spinning assembly and finish the shell that way. Uh, that's exactly what those Chinese machines do, but in my case, that's a project for another day. And there you have it, so like I said, I'm working on this crazy video series in which I will be taking you guys through the process of making different types of fireworks, how they're fired, different shapes in the sky and crazy stuff like that. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>